All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Behind the Curtain. My name is Carly, and I'm going to be the moderator for today. If you're watching with us live, you are welcome to join in the chat feature. If you're viewing our desktop, I believe the chat room should be right below our screen. If you're viewing our cell phone, I believe you can go to like scroll a couple pages. But please send your questions and comments over to us, and we'll try to answer as many as we can today. And if programming like this is something that you value, please consider making a donation after the end of this chat. But without further ado, I would love to introduce Stephen and the rest of the cast of Aladdin. Hello. Hold out there. Hi. Hi. Hello. Okay, start video, all right. Rocco with the whole. Um, I can't see myself, Carly. Hmm. All right. Let's. I guess I don't need to. I mean, it's fine. But start my video. I can't. I can't see Steven okay. either. There, there we go. go. Oh, we can see there you. Okay. Hi, really everybody. Uh, thank th you, folks at home tuning in. Thank you very much for tuning in. Appreciate it. Welcome to another behind the curtain for Majestic Children's Theater. And this week, uh, we're talking about Aladdin and the Wonderful Lamp from 2017. And here I have. Uh, the cast, save for uh, uh, Hannah, who couldn't be here. Um, so welcome, everybody. Uh, first, let's, uh, as we always do, let's start by just going around like it's a first rehearsal or meet and greet. Say your name and who you played in the in the uh, play. And uh, briefly, just what you're up to now. Okay? And I will just go as I see it on my screen, uh, starting with Rocco. Hello, everyone. I'm Rocco Degree. I play the recurring character, Boldeo, and in Aladdin, he discovers that he is the genie. Um, recently, I've been working on my own original music, and I, to just of, as of today, I got cast in the short film From a Distance 2020 Coronavisions at the Lava Center. Well, good for you. Great. Thanks, Rocco. Uh, Ian? Uh, I'm, my name is Ian Beverly. I uh, played one of the guards, one of the two guards. And I've worked on uh, almost every other main stage and children's theater play since then as a backstage assistant type thing. And what I'm up to today is not really much. This corona has me out of a job. So I've been just kind of fishing, hiking, uh, climbed Mount Greylock the other day. That was good. Nice. That's about it. Great. Not much more to do. Yeah, I hear you. Thanks, Ian. Uh, Ani? Hi, my name is Ani, and um, I play the Sultan and the Ghost of Mowgli. And um, I'm up to, I like doing art, and I like to play music. I play the trumpet with um, one of my band directors, and uh, yeah. Great. Thanks, Ani. You'll have to give us a demonstration on the trumpet. In one <laughs> of the uh, Nanette. Hi, my name is Nanette. And I played Princess Jasmine. Um, what I'm up to now, I took a little break from theater, but now my friend is actually writing the next play for HCC. Um, it's more kind of like a digital play, so it actually fits really well for our current situation. Great. Um, mm -hmm. I'm playing music too for fun. That's about it. Great. Thanks, Nanette. Yeah, I saw Nanette. I saw you on the TV like a couple days ago promoting. Yeah. HCC, right? And it's, yep. it's like, yeah, I know her. Great. Uh, I see in in sharing a box because they're sisters, Emily and Allison. Hi, um, my name is Emily Weber, and I played a dancer, and I also choreographed, um, which is kind of cool. Um, yeah. And I just finished my freshman year at Roosevelt University for musical theater with a dance concentration. Great. Thanks, and Allison. I was also a dancer. I didn't choreograph, though. Um, and I, too, finished my freshman year. Having, having a hard time hearing her, Carly. Yeah, I think the mic is muted. I have no, to I'm not sure if you guys are muted. You may need to move closer to the microphone. I don't know if you want to go to Giuseppe, and then we'll come back to you, too. Do you want to try again, Allison? Hear me better now. Much yep. better. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, right there. Um, 
then I guess I'll just start over. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Allison. Uh, I was a dancer. Uh, I didn't choreograph, though. Um, I finished my freshman year at Bard College at Simons Rock this past semester year, um, and I've been studying some math and doing a lot of practicing. That's not very exciting. But... <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah. That's great. Thanks, Allison. And Giuseppe? Uh, my name is Giuseppe. Uh, I played Jafar and the Mysterious Old Man, and... Um, Lately, I've just been uh, doing stocks and uh, just sitting around, not doing much. Uh, I also just finished my sophomore year at uh, UMass Amherst. Great. Thanks, Giuseppe. And Benjamin? Hello, my name is Benjamin Upperton. I played one of the gods. And right now, I am going to the University of Maine studying library science. Great. Thanks, Ben. And uh, German. Hi, my name is German, and I played Aladdin. And I've not been doing much lately. I have online school, and I mostly play video games when I'm at home. Great. Thanks, German. Uh, okay, one second. And that's everybody. Uh, Carly, real quick, I just got a text from Hannah's mom saying Hannah is trying to join but having a tough time. So. If you're oh, able right. to help her out or see what's going on, investigate. Yeah, thank you for letting me I'll reach out to her. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, so every time we do this, guys, and for anyone who's new, I just I generally just start by throwing it out to you guys and saying that we can talk about, you know, feel uninhibited. Let's talk about, we can talk about any element of the play, you know, by scenes or character, or we can talk about the story itself, our adaptation, how it compares and contrasts with other adaptations, you know, such as the, the Disney one and... Um, or we can uh, talk about uh, elements of the production itself, uh, you know, concretes, you know, uh, props or costume set, music, dance, anything like that. So I will throw it out to you guys. Feel free, uh, ask, ask me questions, ask each other questions, um, and we'll, we'll just have a discussion, see where it leads us. All right? All yours. Go ahead, Rafa. I have a, I have a question for uh, you, German. Uh, this, this was your uh, first play. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about like what you're what you're experiencing and how you feel about the play now looking back? Unmute yourself, German. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Okay. Um. Yeah, I felt like I could have done better with some of the lines. And the way I like talked, I could have given a more expression to it. And um, I don't really know much more. Sure, sure. Yeah, well, for goodness sake, how old are you? Um, you know, it's good to, to, to be a self-critic, but uh, you know, you're yeah. fantastic. How old are you at the time? For goodness Ten. sake. Oh, I know, I was seven. Seven. <laughs> I'm, I'm 10 now and, and you're 10 now yeah you're a little yeah. kid so uh yeah, you yeah had so no, many thought... lines to memorize you did a great job yeah you Thanks. did yeah yeah you really did anyone anyone have any anything else i got something to say sure. i feel like uh aladdin almost everything that could go wrong on the play <laughs> did at some point or another the, the <laughs> curtains wouldn't all close the the lamp broke the fog machine was the fog machine was something else oh there's a, there's a bunch more other things there's there's like the movie jaws it's so funny one of my favorite plays german during the rehearsals which is hilarious oh one of my favorite <laughs> movies. we had a lot of we had a lot of fun oh the rehearsals yeah. were so much fun yeah oh. my favorite thing with german would be like you'd be in the middle of rehearsal and just out of nowhere um <laughs> Yeah, he, he would raise his hand <laughs> kid in school and go, uh, can I ask a question? And I was thinking it's going to be about the play or something. And he would just go, what time is it? <laughs> go, well, it's 12 o'clock, you know. <laughs> I imagine for a kid, uh, German, that the days probably felt really long. They fly by for me. I don't know about anyone else. but uh, Yeah, they started to by the yeah. fifth year. Yeah, yeah. Do you yeah. remember? 
Uh, um, one time, uh, Giuseppe, no, it was Rocco forgot the lamp and I had to push it underneath the curtain. And oh, I, yeah. I think that might have been in this it. one. It's it's in the, it's it in was the a hand movie. that just drops the, the, the lamp through the curtain. <laughs> that drops yeah. the lamp. Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. That's there, so funny. I mean, I I really enjoyed this uh, film production. Like I like I I think it's just one of one of my favorite ones. Like just like to watch alone. Um, but there there were a couple of bloopers here, and of course, like I mm. I, I I can't. I of course I have to mention the yeah. beard. Yeah, that didn't oh. like my face. It just it just didn't <laughs> yeah. want to be there. And then of course one one faithful moment. It's like I'm just having this monologue, and it's just pretty much comes entirely off my face and I'm just like mumble 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 excuse me for the moment <laughs> <laughs> my head inside the treasure chest fix it and then there's just beautiful music playing for like a couple seconds and then I jump right up and all oh, right back into the story oh, it 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 was a lot it was a lot for me to watch yeah you you covered that beautifully uh Rocco and yeah, I really people cool. were on board with you when you did that uh, they they were fine they sympathized you know um, mm -hmm. I think, yeah, out of I all think performances, I don't recall you having much trouble with the beard at, at other performances. Maybe I'm wrong, but uh, at this one, yeah, yeah it, that that one was that one was tro troubling. We like had to like tape that tape that thing to my face, and then um, and then at the end of the show when I shaved the um, well, well, I didn't shave the beard; it just magically disappears. And I'm like, oh, I'm free. This is wonderful. Yeah. Um, <laughs> another really great part of this is that I was doing this show barefoot. It was comfortable. <laughs> well, if we're going to talk about bloopers, like every, almost every show for this, I couldn't find the curtain to part it. So there was the, the part where I'm like, Jeannie, come with me. And we're supposed to walk through the curtain. But um, that never happened. And I made Rocco basically lug that head, that chest all the way up the stairs off the exit. Was, <laughs> I remember yeah. that. That's 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 another opportunity just to, like for another comedic moment. Just make yeah, it work. It or so struggling. <laughs> yeah. Oh gosh, I love oh, yeah. I love it when Boldeo comes back. It's like, oh excuse me. Hello, my name is Boldeo. I, I forgot my treasure. <laughs> <laughs> I love when uh um we first see Ani for the first time as the Sultan when they oh, the yeah. yes. chair around and he's playing <laughs> with toys and uh yeah. Do you want as hey, the two I'm... full size guards? <laughs> Ani, you did such a a great job as the yeah. Sultan. Like I I really mean that. From like just comparing it to like to Jungle Book being like your first play, you did a hundred percent for for the Sultan. You were so funny. Like how how far you win since since Jungle Book is is really great. Thanks. <laughs> Anything? I Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Yeah. I remember the part where, like, um, Giuseppe was in the cage and Ani looks at. Oh, wait. I think who was. Giuseppe was kneeling down and Ani, like, shakes his hand <laughs> and then, like, goes, go away. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else have any. Uh... Uh, when the um, I pinched the uh, German with the handcuffs on stage, I remember he was really, pinching. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <Herman. laughs> I tried to handcuff him on the stage in front of all these people, and he's telling me it's pinching. <laughs> I felt so bad. Yeah, Eventually, I just started slipping him on. Yeah, Nanette, go ahead. Um, we were just talking about my little booper. Towards the end of the show, I'm sharing the stage of German, and I don't know. I look out to the audience, and my my line just left me and I completely forgot it. And so German saw me panicking and he just whispers my line to me on stage and you can hear it. <laughs> and I was like, I like my eyes just said, thank you. <laughs> and, then, and then we just left the stage running to get to the next scene. And I just gave him the biggest hug backstage and just said, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I just could not believe that happened. But I, I know it's so ironic because I remember telling, I think, you, Nanette, and you, Rocco, if not the whole cast, I said, hey, listen, German is, you know, is seven and he's got a lot of lines. And if you forget, <laughs> just whisper. I'd rather you whisper it to him if you know it than try to improv or anything because it's going to throw him off further. Mm -hmm. I think that he, he ended up doing it for you. Yeah. <laughs> and he, has, he has so many lines. And I'm, I just, I couldn't believe it. I 
that that was like one of my favorite funniest moments from the show. <laughs> Is that Allison raising her hand? Yeah, I think um, one thing that I thought was really funny was during the rehearsal process. At one point, when um, uh, German he wishes to be invisible, and he oh, asks, yeah. like, "When when do I become uninvisible?" <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was really funny. Good question. That's a plot hole. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Just... <laughs> You're right, German. That's a plot hole for on my end. <laughs> I need yeah. the invisible lamp. Oh, an invisible lamp. Great... The, um, the invisibility audience. part came from when I write these, I always look for uh, other sources of uh, material in other movies. And there was some like Turkish movie, I think, made of Turkey <laughs> from like the 70s <laughs> I found on YouTube. And it's the part where he uh, he wishes to be invisible so he can talk to the princess. I thought that was interesting, so I put it in our story. Carly, I see hardcore you. research, yeah. Steve. We have a uh, Kathy here in her audience, and she says Emily did a great job with the choreography. Do you want to yeah. talk about that process at all? Yeah, I wanted to. I do want to talk about that. Go ahead, Emily. Sure. So um, this was my first time choreographing for the Majestic, and really almost professionally. Um, so it was a bit of a stretch for me, but I really enjoyed it. And what I did, I wanted to be as, um, I guess, truthful to um, Indian culture as possible. So I did a lot of research beforehand um, on Bollywood dancing and traditional Indian dancing and looking at different what different hands um, gestures meant. And that's kind of what I incorporated a lot into my choreography. And um, honestly, they were pretty short dance numbers, so I didn't really have, you know much to do but I think Steven's ideas for the dancers was to create them as like kind of the magic behind it all which I thought was quite fascinating and I really enjoyed exploring that idea yeah yeah you did an amazing job I think we uh I think I gave you like 10 tracks or something of, of music that I liked and uh and then we talked about where the dances should be and what they should kind of feel like and I think we watched some like yeah. Hollywood type stuff I, I like that in like in, in Indian um movies where even if it's not a musical it ends with a dance i like yeah. that celebratory uh nature um you know and there were three dancers that that danced to the same exact song actually in the jungle book that cassie had, had choreographed and it's three different uh three different girls three different performers uh, so it was interesting to see another take on the same song and it was fun to bring i mean there is continuity between jungle book little princess and this to bring those those dancers back and to have them play a part uh, in the story to be kind of the silent Greek chorus and to help out when they're needed to make the magic to, you know, come out with a monkey to uh, change German into a prince, um, yeah. to be servants um, at, at uh, Ani's uh, palace for the young sultan and they have to play games with him, uh, which they're just letting him win. He doesn't, I was going to mention, I love um, when he says, king me at the end of the palace scene when he's playing <laughs> chess. King oh. me is King me is checkers, you know, so he doesn't even know how to play. Yeah, you know what I mean. That's a joke that I don't know. Maybe it goes over people's heads, but uh, I remember it. Anybody else on uh, uh, dancing or uh, any other production element? Um, Jafar's hands. <laughs> Jaf well, well, it's also Jafar's whole costume, like the like the ginormous. His beard like, was great. On, like on on the robes and like this. Yeah. He's up. And they're like you're you're such an animated character, um, very, very much like the the Disney one, I would say. So, uh, congratulations to you. That turned out super well. It was awesome. Thank oh, you. when his hat fell off and his <laughs> wig say, cap uh, was there. It is so weird sometimes to like just force yourself to do things like that, like to just constantly have your hands like that. <laughs> it's just so like it's unnatural, but like. And then after a while, like, I'm not even gonna lie, like, it, it becomes like, like, you don't even think about it. It's so weird. Like, yeah, Jafar's, uh, your your hands tend to seem to be, um, I forget what you call that in like theater school. Like, what do you lead with? What body part is your most, you know, that you use the most or helps you define your character? And it's certainly, you're right, Rocco, it seems to be his his hands it's kind of mr burns right from the simpsons like yeah, yeah you know there's oh, a villainous yeah, quality uh it suggests uh scheming you know <laughs> um and i will say i love giuseppe when you when we finally meet jafar 
we met him in, in disguise, but you know, it's interesting when I rewatch these and I realize that I don't introduce Jafar the villain until like 40 minutes in. Yeah. Uh, and it is really nice when you first make that entrance. I mean, the crowd seems to, um, the crowd on the recording seems to really take to you coming out and, and there's a sense of like, uh, plot. Now there's, now there's really some conflict and it seems to be that it was all leading to this. Um, cause we go kind of astray and off, the, off the map for a while telling stories, uh, um, you know, so it's, it, it was fun to see Jafar come in and keep, keep that plot rolling. <clears throat> and, I, and I love the gag real quick. And, and I, cause I cast Gurman before I wrote it. So I wrote into the play jokes about his being this so height. young and so small. <laughs> yeah. So it's like Jafar yeah. saying, here is he down here. Ah! Ah! <laughs> so and even the end when they, when they battle, I didn't, it, uh, on the recording, that choreography is starting to fall apart a little bit. But the idea was that he, he swing, you know, the villain swings over his head. You know, Aladdin uses the height to his advantage. Oh, and and uh, yeah. sneaks through the bars of the of the little cage. Yeah, which gets, which gets a nice laugh. Yeah. Anybody else? Uh, Nanette, you had your hand up a second ago. Yeah, Ian mentioned when Giuseppe's uh, hat fell across the stage <laughs> during that fight. Right? And I remember, I think it landed on an audience member. And just that whole scene was just hilarious. I don't think we could, we couldn't stop laughing for like a couple minutes. It was just. It was so hard not to laugh on stage. Yeah. What did I do with the wig? Did I go grab the hat? I think no, you did. You, you left it. I think I, you left no, it. No, I, I think I grabbed it. You had to. <laughs> was, I don't... The image of you running at me with the sword because you missed German with the swing. Like oh, yeah. the yell, the eyes, the, without the hat, I almost didn't catch you. I almost <laughs> fell laughing. It was so funny. And you then, almost, you almost face planted. Yeah. His little, my little uh, nod to He Man when he says, "I have the power." Of this yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, Rocco, go ahead. Uh, guys, I I think we're forgetting about the the best blooper of all when when the the curtain wouldn't close or open and we had to do oh. the set trend yeah we had to do the set transition with it open and we're we're going to baghdad and oh. you guys I are just changing that. the set and i'm like woo! <laughs> <laughs> oh my uh, god that was that was a headache it's funny that it's good that we can laugh about this stuff now because i gotta tell you i wasn't i wasn't laughing at the time oh, <laughs> no. nobody was nobody <laughs> I'm pretty sure we were all like scared. Like oh, yeah. <laughs> I was oh, on was Ben's off. butt about moving. I felt so bad afterwards, but it was it was a that was a tragic moment. <laughs> Is um does anyone remember the time the audience the camp turned up 15 minutes late and they're talking yeah. stuff, kind of like airplane engine noise the entire way through the play? <laughs> oh no, <laughs> airplane <laughs> noise. I, turbulence. Maybe there's some sound problems that day. Anybody no, else? No. Uh, it, 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 uh, any other scene or moment or thing in the story you want you want to talk about? Emily, go ahead. Uh, I thought um, I was watching it, and all of a sudden, I saw the wizard, and I was like, oh my goodness. The wizard. Backstage, that thing was so popular amongst yes! everyone. That oh my god, we had to lock it up. We had to ban it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we had to ban had people to, from using it. I had to stop you guys. That was horrible. <laughs> the wizard Emily's referring to is the Sultan. Ani has this little toy um, that I can remember. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, uh, going to like or like a old old timey village type place, you know, where people dress up like they're like they're in the 1700s. And and um, I remember they gave us a that was a toy that that kids played with. Uh, like a Renaissance fair. No, more like, no, more like um, seven, Salem, like Pilgrim types. Yeah, Salem. Yeah, things like that. So I remembered that as a kid and uh, got an Amazon and pulled one up. You still have it, right, Ani? A lot of, a lot of random memories, Steve. <laughs> That's a random memory. <laughs> Comes in yeah, handy. you use what you know, you know? Yeah. I suppose. I've that never been to hard. a 17th like, century village. Ani had that thing all mastered, and like we were like, "Oh, that that's easy. I could do that." And like nobody it, could do it. It took yeah. me so long. You know, <laughs> I loved. I've always loved in movies where a kid is um, 
powerful and like has control over adults. I just find that so humorous, you know, and, and he has everything. And um, I, I realized when I watched this movie recently, I was like, oh, that's where I got, I think, Ani as the Sultan. Um, and it's, it's in the movie The Money Pit with Tom Hanks. Where yeah. they're falling mm-hmm. apart. I don't know if you guys ever seen that movie, but he goes to ask a long time ago. He's like a music um, is a lawyer for, for people in the music industry. And he goes to uh, ask for a loan from uh, a kid called Benny, who's like a Justin Bieber, but like 12. And he's like in a robe and cartoons are on the TV and he's smoking a cigarette and he puts it out on the floor. <laughs> a maid comes over and picks it up for him, you know? Um, and I was like, oh, that's, that's kind of, I think that's where I got that I- idea from. And real quickly, while I'm on the subject, speaking of just things that are, you, that come, you pull out of your subconscious when writing and, and putting a play together. Um, I, I was watching uh, Terminator 2 on TV and it got <laughs> to the part where young John Connor is telling, uh, realized that he is um, in charge of the Terminator. He goes, oh, you have to do what I say. And the first thing he asks him is to stand on one leg. I was like, oh, maybe that's where I got, you know, that the first thing, it makes sense that the, a kid would do something silly like that, you know? But uh, anyway, um, but, you know, is I like- the Muddy Pit the one where you got the idea for, um... I'm afraid the the turk the turkey from um, you remember what I'm talking about the turkey scene? Yeah, but where did I use that in a play, Giuseppe? For um, the Frog Prince. No. You remember? Oh, oh yeah. There's the kitchen is like burning oh, up. No, I was wrong. Yes. So yeah, when you when you come out, you need to look just dazed. It, uh, and and the, I, maybe I pulled uh, it. We watched it, but when oh, the when it almost explodes on Tom Hanks and he just walks in. And he's all burned up and he just looks <laughs> yeah yeah that's funny yeah it's funny how uh, movies inspire you whether you know it or not carly what's up inspiration comes from anywhere we have Anne marie here with us today and she's Anne marie. Marie. i know i'm so excited to see your name in here <laughs> marie. i love how the dancers were incorporated into the plot especially at the end and how the dance they did for jafar under the red lights was more restrained which helped create an impressive or oppressive atmosphere were there any other elements like that that have stood out to you from the show? I mean, I guess for Steven or for any of you. Good guys, anybody? I miss her cooking. Mm. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> on, on, on Tech Night, we don't get scones. <laughs> treats. She's good enough to drop up treats. Anybody have anything the, to that, that? The biggest backstage issue was that curtain, but eventually figured out it was just a screw that was blocking it. Yeah, yeah. Production um, moments, guys. Anything to answer? Um, Anne-Marie? go ahead, Rocco. Yes, um, I was gonna mention as always, the set is really great. Uh, but in the very beginning, we you um, well, you use a dimension when we have the um, like the, the Giuseppe's mysterious old man character, uh, peering in through the cave, um, and then of course, like where he's up on like the second level majestic theater looking down. I think yep. that's a really great, yeah, I remember that. uh, really great uh, design right there. Really great idea. And then, of course, the um, the set of of Baghdad and the palace, where it's just um, like a a two dimensional little cutout, but with the lights, it ended up like looking like really, really great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was gonna say like, um, but I loved how. Um, because I never got to see it because I was in it, um, when the dancers come on in silhouettes um, in the back with the set, it just looked like so pretty. And I loved that, how something so simple just takes you to a different world. I love that. A whole new world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I want, yeah, I mentioned this with Sleepy Hollow, how it's, um, you know, it's tough. Not only is there two other children's shows going on and rehearsing and performing on top of each other, but there's tons of stuff going on at the Majestic Theater all summer long. There's concerts and things. And so, yeah, you got to come up with a set that's um, simple but effective that can kind of go up and down relative, relatively easily and quickly. Relatively. So, um, but I think this one does the job. I looked up at, like, I Googled images of, of people's stage adaptations of Aladdin, and I saw kind of this, that, those dome shapes uh, consistent in most of them. Carpets on the floor I really liked. I liked the hanging the lanterns with the candles in it. I wish there were brighter... Lights the shells were nice. Oh, and the shells, which t- which is all in all three shows. Yeah, German, you're gonna say something. Yeah, I remember like every day my mom would take me to the couch and like she would get the binder with all the lines and like make me remember them. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Getting your lines down was uh was tough. You had a lot of lines, but you did beautifully. Yeah. Um, you were again. You were you were seven, and uh, yeah. yeah. And it's funny. I remember your father telling me, and I think I told all you guys. I just found this humorous that he was saying he, he pulled when it was coming down to the wire. He pulled me aside and he's like, "Listen, German has been watching. He's I'm going to buckle down." And he's going to learn his lines. He's been watching Moana. I'm going to tell him, no more Moana. No more Moana. I remember that. I was, I was like, good, yeah, make him buckle down because this is this is going to ha- this is for real, you know. Yeah. I think there's you're so young at a certain point, uh, German. You were like, so there's going to be people here watching us in a couple of days, and it's like, oh my god. I mean, I was like, yes. <laughs> I I remember that the moment. Idea. When when Gurman is just like, wait, what are we doing this for? Are we filming a movie? And it's like, no, we're gonna we're gonna fill every, everybody here. It's just gonna be gonna be filled with people. And it's like, oh, okay. What time is it? It turned out so well in the rehearsal pro- process. It was so much fun. Nanette, go one ahead. of the most memorable rehearsals. I was gonna ask everybody when we all got casted. Did you guys go see the movie? For analysis or did you read the short story or even hear the Broadway musical like what did you guys do like to analyze Hi guys oh, I'm rock of Go ahead. well I've seen the Disney movie way too many times as a kid so I immediately went to the obscure stuff that, like like yeah. like Steve did like I remember watching like old like black and white movies and I read the uh, the original story and that stuff really fascinates me because you just you find out like the origin, you find out how how it evolved. Yeah, it's interesting how there's no author uh, to this uh, story. It's it's so old. And um, yeah, going back to the original source material was it was tough to write this one because unlike a uh, unlike a Jungle Book and Little Princess, which are rich, detailed, beautiful, full length novels, you know, nineteenth century novels. So novels are really really rich and good. Um, but for this, there's just a like a three page story, and it, it isn't even all that good. I mean, to be honest, like it's okay, you know. Um, Wait, so really? A lot that... of there's a lot of holes to fill, you know, plot wise. Uh, so it was t- tough to write. Just that you gonna say something? Yeah, is it really that short of a story? Like, yeah. oh, wow, I remember that picture? Yeah, it's like three. That's pages. a sick picture. <laughs> I remember. Yeah, I remember when. Uh, was, Steve, didn't you take these pictures on my phone, and I had to send them to you? I did. <laughs> this one's really nice. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, that's that's that display. I just I just you got the barely phone. see Ian's hand <laughs> holding the tube up, right? You know what I really like though oh, about yeah. the show? Oh, the... it's right there. You know, <laughs> oh, you know in the oh, beginning, you can't see my hand. Yeah, just Steve, you know how in the beginning, uh, it leads up to that present moment. So like, it goes back in time to when he met the old man, and then it leads back to where he is now. I thought that was a really cool element. Like I just watching it, I was like, "Oh, that's kind of that's kind of funny." What? Is he's here? Like, <laughs> was, I don't know. Yeah, I just, that was cool. yeah, I like that too. And one of the biggest, and and well, I like that right off the bat, a child is now telling him a story. We can get into yeah. like how Aladdin and Boldeo are are both very similar, and they have similar character arcs in the story. They kind of help each other, and they kind of have the same problem, um, which I think is interesting. And they both are kind of redeemed at the end, and this whole theme of trying to live up to. Mowgli and Sarah Crew and and to be a hero and um and um yeah what was I gonna oh, what was I gonna say um yeah it was tough uh to uh writing this one because unlike Jungle Book and Little Princess which are like memory plays so it's Boldeo telling a narration of something that's already happened and the memory kind of conjures up the action in front of you this one is in real time you know Aladdin right. comes in and now suddenly you know, it's not a it's not a memory. It's not something that happened. It is happening. So that's a big difference between between this one and the other two. Um, anybody, anybody else? Do you have the uh, lantern right there with you, Steve? The lamp. Yeah, yeah. the lamp. Yeah, uh, it's right here. It has the screw still on oh, it. Yeah, the bottom. It's yeah. It's screwed I off. remember when uh, German or was it uh, Rocco? They plopped it down, and I know it was German. And Rocco goes, "You broke my lamp." <laughs> yeah, I can't, I can't believe it broke because this is a hefty, this is a hefty lamp. Um, oh, you got a little lamp too, right, Carmen? Yep. <laughs> yeah, I think I gave that to you. Whoa. Yeah. 
That was a reject lamp because it wasn't. I didn't think it was large enough. <laughs> it was a reject lamp. Oh, there's, there's a there's a big item. item. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's yeah, that's pre <laughs> the oh yeah, dagger. all but the diamond Therapy broke dagger. at one point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was hard to find a good lamp. This one was actually, I'll I'll just say it, 150 bucks, and it came from Turkey. Wow. Nice. wow. But I couldn't wow. find a better one, and I was like, well, it's 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 in the title for goodness sake, so it better look good. Um, so yeah. I I thought it yeah. was getting. I thought it was worth that expense, but I couldn't believe that it broke. And speaking of just uh, things that affect the story, I remember, I think in the script it said that they tossed the lamp around at the end to keep it from Jafar. And I realized in the middle of oh, our yeah. article when we got there, I was like, oh no, this thing weighs like five pounds. They can't toss it around, you know, they're gonna hurt each other. So it changed into uh, just passing it off, which I think worked well, it was fun. Yeah. Anybody else? So I have a question for you, Steven. Yeah. Um, so why did you choose to use Boldeo as the genie instead of just writing it as Aladdin, you chose to continue the trilogy. Well, we talked about this a little week, and Rocco, you can you can help me out with this. But we talked about it uh, in our last couple um, discussions about how um, you know I didn't plan on uh, uh, on him being a recurring character. He was just a narrator in the Jungle Book, and um, I like that he's the narrator that took part. In the story, he met Mowgli, so he's kind of he has this firsthand account, so he says. And then when I was reading The Little Princess to adapt that, I noticed that there was a there was an Indian character who plays a big part in the story, but actually but doesn't say much. And I thought, well, the character's name is Ram Das. And I thought, what if it's you know, what if it's the same guy? And I justified it by I, you know, I don't know much about this, but you know, uh, Indian uh, people tend to I think usually have many surnames and middle names that they tend to use often. So I thought it was, wasn't a stretch that he could be called, he could say he named Ram Dass and Baldeo. And I thought that funny enough, Jungle Book and Little Princess had this connection of the child hero, the child protagonist who is is kind and brave and, and their greatest weapon is the use of their mind and being positive. And um, and then at the, at the beginning of Little Princess, it was just a gag to think um, when he pulls the lamp out of he pulled, you know, an Aladdin looking lamp out of the chest before he got to the diamond and was like, oh, nope, and just put it back. And that, that gets a laugh. Um, uh, so but then from there, I think we started to joke around like, what if what if he did play a part in Aladdin and what would that be? And it seemed clear that if he's going to be anyone, he would be the genie, you know, and I borrowed from the Disney version, this idea of the genie needing to be set free. And I thought that worked well for Boldeo and it gives him a character arc. And I thought, if you bring a character back, you know, if, he, if he's in two stories, it'd be kind of weird to leave him hanging there. So I thought, let's give it a third, a third act and give him a proper, a proper send off, you know, and wrap up and give him a, you know, like a redemption and he, he gets a fresh start and he's not, uh, not an old man anymore, trapped telling stories. So that's basically it. We have anything to say about that, Rocco? Oh, yes. Um, I remember after Jungle Book, uh, we were in the cafe and you were like, hey, Rocco, you, you ready to put Boldeo to rest? And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, of course. And then I got a call. He's like, hey, are you going to are you gonna do uh, Majestic Theater again this summer? Uh, I'm thinking of bringing Boldeo back. And I'm like, oh, here we go again. <laughs> uh, go. But of course, I was I was so pleased to do it now that I, and I have like my own like original reoccurring character. But the question I have for you, Steve, is that there's this glorious scene in the beginning of act one where Boldeo just spills his guts and tells his whole story. Yeah. Can you tell me about how you like actually like put this mashup together with, uh, um, with like um, Mr. Crew and the diamonds and, uh, and how, how, how it all relates together. Cause it all, it all comes out in that scene. Really great. Yeah. Yeah. So he does some more storytelling, which, which is another common thread between jungle book, little princess and this one. Um, is is the, the theme of storytelling being within the story itself. Um, I also thought just in practical terms that not everyone had seen Jungle Book or Little Princess. Maybe they saw one, not the other, or vice versa, or none at all. So I thought just um, exposition wise, that, that would bring them up to speed. Um, a little risky, I mean, it goes on a while. You expect the plot to start by then, but yeah, you kind of, but I, when I was rewatching, I was like, this makes total sense to me that he needs to, uh, spill his guts and tell a story because the play ultimately is about him and uh so we need to know how he wound up there and why he's why he's punished and it seems to be because he was looking for the get rich quick 
you know, finding this instead of living a good full life, he was he just spent his life pursuing that treasure. And by the time he got it, he has nothing, you know, so. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Any, anything else like that, Rocco or anybody? Well, Go I, ahead. I think, uh, Go ahead. Rocco and then German. Well, yeah. uh, I, I'll just say it, it wrapped up really well. I think it's so funny in the beginning when he's pulling out all the objects out of the chest, like, no, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, I can't wait for the prequels. Uh, <laughs> go ahead, well, we said in past discussions, I was like, you know, you can't have uh, a new hope and then Empire Strikes Back without Return of the Jedi, you know. But and and, and, and two um, and two for me, uh, uh, Rocco, I'd mentioned this before that it was it was a way for me to say goodbye to that character and that 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 crutch of you know using him as the device to get these plays written, um, you know, to send him off properly. And to for my mind, there's only three Star Wars movies, so <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we'll be seeing. <laughs> Maybe one day. Maybe one day we'll see Baldeo again. You never know. He'll just pop in. <laughs> like a little Hello. job of the hut. <laughs> job of the hut's palace. There's Baldeo just dragging a chair. I considered when we did James and the Giant Peach, because there's a mysterious old man who comes in out of nowhere and gives James the bag of glowing green magic things. Oh, I remember that. I, Considered what you know, maybe if Boldeo came in pulling his treasure chest, so it's between uh, Little Princess and Aladdin, and he just passes off the, the green things to him as if you know people are after him, um, and then he moves you know from left to right, moves on with his treasure chest. I thought that'd be funny for people who know him, and if you don't know who, who Boldeo was, you would go, "Geez, that man sure was. Mis- what's his story?" You know, yeah, <laughs> he was serious. <laughs> but we, really we ended up going with uh, Giuseppe in the kind of traditional uh, mysterious old man. Thanks. Yeah, German. <laughs> Bye, German. Um, what time is it? <laughs> <laughs> and then this would be the part uh, where we all laugh, yeah. freeze frame, roll credits. <laughs> <laughs> oh, That's <man>. so funny. <laughs> Anybody else on uh, anything at all? Feel free. Oh, Carly, here we go. All right. Well, first of all, we have uh, a mini mouse. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. We're going to give a shout out to her sister, Aubrey. It's her birthday today. So happy birthday, Aubrey. Happy Happy birthday, birthday, Aubrey. Aubrey. How old is she? Didn't say. You can't ask a lady how old she is. That's not very nice. (laughs) (laughs) And then uh, Kathy has another question. Um, We'll start with Steven, and then I guess we can go around with everyone. How did you get interested in theater? Did you start when you were a child? Is this for me or for the, everybody? It was directed at Stephen, but we can direct it to everyone as well. I love sure. this story. <laughs> oh, uh, I've heard it. Geez. Um, it, when I was a, a freshman in high school, uh, uh, the, the, the theater teacher was really, really, he was a really amazing theater teacher, uh, literally pulled me off the track field uh, to come play the the dentist they needed a dentist in little shop of horrors um and i just enjoyed doing that you know when i grew up with that movie with rick, rick moranis and i really liked that movie and um yeah and incidentally th- that seeing teachers actually who who started the the children's theater shows uh, at the majestic he went to danny and pitched you know a, a way to a do children's theater at, a, you know something to, to to do in the summer when our main season is over um so he actually started the program then um, he passed away in 2011 or something like that. And uh, yeah, so it's just kind of wild that I've, I've got to, you know, inherit this program that he started, you know, and we have, we have that connection. And we performed on the Majestic stage uh, once or twice together. But uh, yeah, yeah, he's, he's a big influence. Yeah. And kind of like Ian here, <laughs> you know, I like talking with Ian because he's uh, not like a theater person. You were just looking. I kind of got sucked just, in. I was looking for a just, job. You were just looking for a job and a paycheck. <laughs> so it's kind of interesting to get your perspective on things as a kind of a non-theater person. But that's kind of how of, I'm getting uh, into it. Weird you know? traditions. That, <laughs> yeah. Like there's some things you can't say in a theater. I had no idea. <laughs> I just I just show up. Um, I remember the uh, first thing I did was children's theater. But the first big play I did was La Caja Phobe. Now that's not a children's play. Huh. That, that was that was something different. That's a whole different experience. That really sent me into the brought me into the theater world of what it was. But yeah, uh, I was just looking for a job, and I had a program, and I met Steve. I expected an interview, and it was more of like, yeah, when can you start? 
<laughs> and uh, I guess Steve liked me, so I've just been working there for I think almost four years now. Yeah, wow. you're consistent and loyal. And and Ben also came to us uh, a similar way, right, Ben? Yes. Did he come? Actually, almost the exact same way. Yeah, the exact same year, right? No, he came <laughs> like a year or two later. Let Ben uh, answer. I was about to say, I guess, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, Ben. It was through an internship program, and I had this huge spiel about all the acting classes I had been in, and I went, oh, yes, and I studied comedia. Okay, you're hired. When can you start? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, and you, and you and Ian were just uh, yeah looking for a job and, and was going to be backstage stuff, but when writing these and having to keep the cast uh, limited, you guys were good enough to... Uh, Get into costume and occasionally yeah, throw in a couple lines. Yeah, yeah. Ian for the bear. Yeah. Anybody else on anything, any anything at all, story or production or blooper or anything like that? Well, we got you in a theater, Seppi. Come on, share your story. <laughs> oh, okay. It's quick. Um, when I when I was younger, I wasn't really like in like I was never thinking like I would ever go on stage. Like I I was always at Majestic because my, my grandmother works there. So I've been there my entire life, like the, the entire life. So I've seen multiple shows. And then one year, my freshman year in high school, actually, I did my first show at high school. And um, I liked the experience. And my Nana actually forced me to, uh, she kind of convinced me to audition for Jungle Book. And I did. And um, it was, and I start. I loved it. That's, that's how I got in. Just, <laughs> it's funny. Hey, German, do you remember like auditioning or how you got involved in this and what your impression was? Did you want to do it? Were your parents kind of pushing you to do it or did um, you end up doing it? Have you done theater since? So. I remember it was in like first grade in England. I had done um, a play and I enjoyed it, but I didn't do another one because then we came to America and then my dad's brother was like, um, do you want to do this play at Majestic Teacher, Aladdin? And they're like looking for a boy like you. And then I did an audition and I got him. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. How about for folks who didn't hear last time? Uh, Ani Root, how did you get involved here? So, uh, <laughs> I, was my, <laughs> I was riding my bike with my friend and um, uh, it was my mom too. She was sitting right next to me, and then this um, Aurora comes down like where I live to my apartment, and then she goes up to me and she's like, "Hey, do you want to act in this play? And you're gonna be a boy." And I didn't know who she was. I was like, um, "No, thank you." <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love yeah. Aurora. No, thank you. And then my mom comes, and then. Um, her and Aurora start having like this talk and stuff and then she's like you should try it out you know you don't you can't be really sure if you're gonna like it or not so I did it and I kind of liked it so I'm still doing Majestic so yeah yeah you've done several shows since at the Majestic and you like it now huh yeah yeah that's great have a real quick uh well you know all right uh, Emily and, and Allison you got, you got two cents on this um I got into theater because my mom Basically, I was so shy that I wouldn't speak, and my mom needed to find a way for me to speak. So she signed me up for theater class, and here I am, majoring in theater, <laughs> about 10 or so more years <laughs> later. Yeah, I think, That's great. Uh, Go ahead, Alton. I got into theater just because everyone else in my family was doing it. Um, <laughs> so and they didn't want to leave me home because like, <laughs> everyone, my dad, my mom, my brother, my sister, everyone was going to the theater so they said you should do it too so i did it too and it's funny because um growing up i was like i'm never going to major in theater like everybody my siblings are both majoring in musical theater i can't do it i can't be like them and now um i'm actually thinking of majoring in uh tech theater so <laughs> nice <laughs> whoops the godfather line like once you think you're out <laughs> Pull you back, Father. <laughs> I love your movie references. Um, to they're so and, good. And they're so good. Context. And, so good. <laughs> and um, Nanette. 
Um, similar to Emily, actually. I was super shy as a kid. And I remembered seeing a musical at Holyoke High School. And that's where I ended up going to high school. And I knew automatically, like, I wanted to do the musicals. I started off being a lead dancer in sophomore year. It was Cinderella. That was my first production. And after that experience, I was like, I need, I need to keep doing this. It's so much fun. And um, after I graduated high school, I didn't want to stop doing it. So I ventured out into community theater and I never stopped. Yeah, that's great. Great. Um, anybody else on anything at all? We got, uh, uh, we got about eight more minutes. I see Carly here. <laughs> Anne Marie has another great topic for us. Sure. Uh, she says it was refreshing to see that there wasn't any romance that Jasmine does not marry, but gets to go off at the end and explore her life while she is still young. So if anyone wants to go off of that topic. Not for Aladdin's lack of trying. <laughs> Too young. <laughs> well, I'll, let, I'll throw this to Nanette in a minute. But yeah, it was obvious, again, since I knew German was going to be so young that there couldn't be any, any real romance there, of course. Um, but I like the idea of... Um, Jasmine, not you know, I've I've always liked the idea of you know, in history, royalty was was just as trapped and born into uh, things, and had no say in the matter, just as much as uh you know poor folks or the underclass, or whatever. Um, there was a, a, a interesting movie Marie Antoinette, I think Sofia Coppola, speaking of Godfather, directed, and uh, Kirsten Dunst was she played um oh Marie yeah Marie Antoinette and um. And there's, there's a scene early on where she's, as soon as she becomes queen, these old ladies just pick her up, they undress her, they put her in a new dress, they take her to where she's gotta go, they tell her what to do, and she has no say in the matter. So I thought it was just interesting that, you know, uh, that she's trapped in a, and then that was a way to work in uh, something for them to share when he's invisible uh, and a way for them to talk and commiserate together and find out they have a similar problem. And um, and it played in, it plays into the theme of, just because you have, you know, you can be have everything and not not be happy. You gotta have, you know, you gotta earn it or you gotta have you gotta have a want, you know. And if everything's just given to you, how how could you be happy? And though that's in everywhere uh, in literature, you know, going all the way to like Paradise Lost and um, the argument that you know if you lived in uh, Eden, you might enjoy it for a little while, but after a while you'd be bored. You need you need conflict. You need to work for things, uh, etc. So you, you have a thoughts on that, Net? Yeah. Um, when I first got the script, I was surprised because, you know, I was expecting that ending from the movie, Aladdin married Jasmine, but obviously in our case that didn't happen. And, you know, I'm really happy it didn't happen because so often in movies, especially like little girls growing up, they always see um, the princess marrying the prince in the end. And what I really like about this show was that you know, Princess Jasmine in the end, she goes off, you know, leaving the palace and the royalty behind and she ventures off finding a new life for herself. And I think that also is like a really great message to send to our audience of um, women, you know, just to have that message of like, it's okay to, you know, venture out of the norm, I guess. Um, and even today, there's still a bunch of places where they still do arranged marriages. Mm. And, you know, I, I'm really happy that in the show, Jasmine could make that a choice to create a life for herself. Yeah, and it's, uh, nice, um, it, it, it's a nice way to wrap her up and the Sultan. And, um, and uh, I like uh, Ani and Annette's little exchange at the end. And Ani saying, no matter where you go, you'll always be a princess. And that plays into this theme of like from Little Princess that uh, you don't have to be born into royalty to be to be special. You know, um, you can just be an individual. Um, yeah. yeah and, and about the idea of uh, it's, it's how you act, you know, if you act like a, a, a princess. And uh, yeah, I'm proud of those last like 10 minutes of the play where thing everything is tied up and neat. A uh, little bow, you know, it reminds me of Broadway plays that are like that. And it's just so satisfying to see things wrapped up uh, neatly and, and everything that's set up in act one paying off in, in those last 10 minutes, you know. Yeah. Uh, Emily, go ahead. 
Princesses. I think you're muted. I'm muted. There you go. No. Now you're good. Okay. Um, I just want to say I think it was interesting that um Nanette played two princesses in that season because she played um yeah. Princess Aurora from Sleeping Beauty and she totally has a love interest. So I thought that was kind of <laughs> cool for I don't know to see a strong female character and more of like a flowery daydreaming kind of girl. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I... Yeah. It was. Go ahead, Nanette. Um, it was interesting, yeah, because I was playing Aurora, and that story is, you know, completely different from Aladdin's, and it's it was still nice because there there's two, you know, two different princesses, two different kinds of strength in each princess, yeah. and each different kinds of empowerment, you know. Um, yeah, it was nice to flip flop. <laughs> um, like each world but it was also nice finding the good like the really cool things about each princess yeah yeah it's funny I, yeah the whole idea of a princess and 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 prince too you know in aladdin's case and uh this idea yeah. of prince and popper uh, stuff going on and and changing roles and seeing what it's like on the other side and uh yeah and just having everything handed to you is not going to necessarily make you happy Mm -hmm. So mind if I throw yeah. in one okay. more thing? Yeah. I I just liked how it just broke the cliche of the guy gets the girl, sort of in just with a small detail, like how in um the original jungle book, uh Car isn't uh the Python isn't a bad guy. He helps Mowgli on his adventures, which I thought was an uh, just in that own way is a nice break from the cliche of the snake's always the bad guy. So I always yeah. like when the details, the cliche details are taken into account and not just thrown in. Yeah, and it was a struggle particularly with this one, with Aladdin, to, to, to come up with an original story. And yeah, there's some nods to the Disney one. How could there not be story-wise? Um, but yeah, that Disney one just hangs over my head. I mean, that is a... That is, and rightfully so. It's a really good movie. And I mean, I just, I remember seeing it in the theater when I was six, you know, with my sister and my grandma. And, and yeah, that, that one looms over you. And it's tough because when you're a kid, you think that that is the version. Like, that is it. We, that's what we say, right? The movie. Yeah. But it's a, it's one adaptation out of many. And it's a really, really good one. But it's not the Aladdin. There is no the Aladdin. I mean, there's our version, there's their version, and there's many, many others out there. Um, so yeah, I wanted to find ways of distinguishing ourselves uh, away from the from the Disney movie while, while also throwing a couple nods to it. Yeah. Anybody else? I like the uh, ending of all the plays after the play was over. Uh, the kids could see all the actors in their costumes. And, yeah. uh, you know, it was real heartwarming that some kid actually wanted me and Ben's... Um, autograph for just being guards having uh -huh. maybe a handful of lines you can probably count them on on one hand and i don't know what it was about us but he liked it and he was upset we weren't out there so we went and gave him an autograph yeah so ben and ian had to immediately because we do many shows a day had to go do preset for the next show so they couldn't go out there for autographs they had to just get right to work um but um yeah, one one kid was 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 looking for them, and the mom came to me and was like, "Where's he? Wants to meet the guards. They were his favorite characters." <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was, it was heartwarming. I, I couldn't very, believe it. I think you guys took a picture with them, and uh, mm -hmm. I'm very sweet. We weren't in our costume though. I felt so bad we, because me and Ben instantly get out of costume and we start cleaning yeah, up the yeah. set. Ah, uh, he knows it's all fake. <laughs> <laughs> it was really sweet seeing all the little girls dressed up as princess jasmine oh yeah and like taking pictures of them they're like hi jasmine and I, oh god like i wanted to cry in that spot right there like it was so sweet <laughs> and they even brought like jasmine dolls yeah and yes. i felt like such a princess like it was mm -hmm. so cool yeah yeah german did you like uh signing autographs after did you talk like talking to the kids yeah, I I was I think I saw like a school come or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Camps. Yeah, I think it was camps. 
German, were you ever, uh, we talked about this in past uh, shows here, uh, were you ever recognized out in public as Aladdin, in a, like in a supermarket or something? Did someone say, hey, I saw you? Um, one of my teachers, um, I think it was in second grade, she came to sign the autograph and every time I see her, maybe at like a grocery store, <laughs> yeah, yeah, she like recognizes me. That's nice. That's a nice feeling, huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, we're almost down to the wire here. If there's uh, any I final... I in. I always yeah, hate great. to cut these discussions short, but this seemed like a good place to kind of, you know, tie everything together, like you were saying earlier. Sure. <laughs> uh, do you want to talk about what we're going to expect next Sunday? Yeah, I think I'm going to I'm gonna switch things up and do... Um, we'll post uh, the cat in the hat. Um, which we just did this past summer. Oh boy! Oh, yeah. <laughs> it feels right to um, just I don't know, jump ahead, do something a little more recent, something that's um, I loved, you know, having these discussions and talking, you know, talking about the story, uh, like this is an English class or whatever. But it's good to throw in um, some <laughs> meaningless romp every now and then, which is kind of what the cat in the hat is. Um, I'd love to catch up with the uh, Eli and Ripley. Definitely. Yeah. And I, yeah, and I wanted to switch up. Yeah, I want to introduce people to to some newer folks uh, like Eli and Ripley and, and Caleb and Amore, who I, I love, um, and and but some people uh, like Giuseppe and, and Josh who have been around for a while. Yeah, German. Um, this is like a question that I've been wondering. Um, how much time did it take you to like make all the set and like all the dialogues for every character? To to write it, costumes, yeah. To write the play, I did it in like a week or something. I was I really procrastinated oh. and then did it in a week. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's that's a way to do things. I <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I guess we have to sign off then. So I just want to thank everyone for joining us again. And again, if this programming is something that you value, please go over to majestictheater.com and go ahead and make a donation. Uh, anything is appreciated. So hopefully we will see you again next Sunday for Cat in the Hat. Thank you everyone Great. for coming today. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye-bye.